Okay, hey guys, Fuzzy Knot back here, and we're picking up from uh, tutorial two. This is now uh, number three in this tutorial series. Um, in the last tutorial, we covered actually overwriting EIP, and we sort of touched on the concept of how uh, just overflowing the buffer isn't enough to crash the program. You actually have to overflow the buffer enough to reach where EIP was stored on the stack. Um, so now, the other concept that I wanted to hit was that uh, it actually isn't when you overwrite that saved EIP that the program crashes. It's at a different point in time that the program crashes and you get control. And I want to illustrate this, uh, this concept. So uh, I have a breakpoint at line 8 where the string copy is. And I have a breakpoint at line 9 right after it. Now I'm also going to put a breakpoint at line 11 and at the very last line where it says return 0. So we're going to have a breakpoint there as well. And what you're going to see is that the program doesn't crash once EIP is overwritten and the program doesn't crash when it's printing the buffer back or, or anything else. So let's run it again. So here we are, breakpoint, we're right about to execute uh, the string copy. We continue, the string copy was executed, the buffer has been overflown, uh, EIP is overwritten, uh, stuff on the stack is, is all messed up, but the program still is going to run just fine because nothing really that bad has happened to it. So the next thing that's going to happen is that it's going to print out some values um, and it's going to print out our buffer. Here you can see that it, it actually successfully prints out the 32 A's and the strings, you know, the value supplied is. And now the next, uh, the next instruction that's about to be executed is return zero. This instruction is where uh, the saved EIP value from the stack is going to be popped back off, put into EIP, and tried to execute. Because whenever our function was called, um, along with all the variables and stuff that are um, that this function needed, uh, the previous value of EIP was saved onto the stack. Now it's been overwritten. At this point, when we say return zero, it is being pulled back off the stack and trying to be executed. At this point, the program crashes. This is something very important to remember. Now. I want to point you into the direction of something else because if this is your first uh, buffer overflow exposure, you're like, what are you talking about? So um, one resource that will probably be really helpful is the Security Tube um, tutorial series. So go ahead and go to Security Tube and go to Groups and start watching these if you haven't yet. Um, if you're absolutely just beginning, I would say go and start with the uh, assembly mega primer. Um, it's somewhere. It's somewhere on this page. Start with the assembly language mega primer. To get all the concepts that I just talked about here, go ahead and watch the few, uh, the first few tutorials in the buffer overflow exploitation mega primer for Linux. Okay, um, the first two or three videos will kind of explain all the stuff that I just explained and be very clear and be very helpful. Okay, so um, we'll pick up next time and we'll actually uh, show one way that makes the program that we just had uh, not vulnerable and we'll continue on with exploiting this program. So if you like this video tutorial series please subscribe. Bye.